Um, what's up, you guys? Okay. <laughs> um, this is gonna be really quick, like, like for real, for real, for real. It's gonna be real quick. Um, I just kind of wanted to clarify a couple of things. A lot of times, you'll hear me say stuff like, um, s- some of the 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 the. the the, the things that um, black people, um, the way we respond to things is, um, be, uh, you know, partly through genetics. And what I mean by that, because I don't want people to misconstrue what I mean. You know, I don't want you guys to think that I think aggression or violence or, or stuff like that is linked <laughs> uh, to blacks with, uh, through genetics. So I wanted to clarify, what I usually mean uh, by that is um, epigenetics. Um, so basically, all that is, is let's say someone in the past, our, our ancestors, right? They had uh, some traumatic experiences, right? And what happens is, sometimes what happens is there's a chemical tag placed on um a gene, particularly the stressor gene, and what ends up happening is you can pass on. When they say you can pass on traumatic experiences, they they mean you can pass on genes that have a chemical tag attached to it um, that make you more susceptible to respond to certain stimuli in a certain way, or either. Um, so uh, the way the way that can be explained is. Let's say um, you have a stressor gene, right? For um, and and it affects uh, the intensity or the functioning or the programming of that gene, and it elevates a certain chemical, right, in that gene, and so that's why you will have blacks who are more susceptible to high blood pressure, and when they come into contact with racism or generational poverty, uh, that gene gets triggered. Okay, so that's what I mean by um, certain things are epigenetic. Um, I'm not really sure about startle response. A lot of black people are hypervigilant and that has a lot to do with, um, our environment, you know, always having to watch our backs, you know, from the cops, you know, from each other, you know, because of how we've been um, pitted against each other. Right. And so we have a, a heightened awareness of our surroundings makes us very, um, hypervigilant. Um, so I just kind of wanted to point that out. There's a really good, um, video. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Uh, epigenetics. Hold on, y'all. Find a video for it. This is actually a really good article. Um. website loads slowly this is a good article so take a really good look at the title because <laughs> i am not about to scroll down um study of a group of african americans finds trauma of slavery passed on to children's genes okay another one is um the one on huffington post is good the one on huffington post is pretty good okay the epigenetics of being black and feeling blue Understanding African American vulnerability to disease again, um, like hypertension, things like that. We have a tendency to have um, more susceptibility to contracting high, um, higher um, blood pressure uh, numbers or levels because we have a gene, the stressor gene has been affected um, because of what we've gone through and what we go through. It, you know, it's continuous. Um, these aren't necessarily permanent um, changes, you know, permanent chemical changes, but um, obviously they're not going away. <laughs> so let me see. Oh, let me see if I can find the video. It might be on Atlantic Black Forum. I hate when they post stuff on Facebook. Like seriously, because when you try to <laughs> when you try to <clears throat> go through it through your phone, oh my god videos uh, or 
when you when they link it to their website, Mm-mm. and you're trying to get it through your phone. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Where's the white lady with the uh, she on the video? Hold on. Oh, Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to find it. Maybe I can do it on the video. All right, here we go. All right. And in another story, an emerging scientific field seeks to identify how traumatic stress could permanently alter one's DNA, which is then possibly passed on to descendants. Dr. Rachel Yehuda is a pioneer in epigenetics. Bet you never heard that word before. She's the director of the Mental Health Patient Care Clinic at the Peters Medical Center and a professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at Mount Sinai Hospital. And she's joining us here in our New York studio. Thank you so much for being here with us, Dr. Yehuda. It's good to see you. Uh, So first of all, just explain, uh, give us just a general in words that we can understand, description or definition of what epigenetics is? Epigenetics refers to the kind of changes that can occur on the DNA that will change the way that the DNA functions. And so it's not genetic change per se, it's a change on the gene that then can be transmitted to the next generation. I know in some of the work that you've done, you've looked at changes uh, in children of Holocaust survivors, that's correct. So explain how it is an event, an environment, can influence a change in the DNA. Well, if you think about the DNA, the DNA is living in the cell, and that's an environment. And there are all sorts of molecules in the cell. So when a person is exposed to trauma, This changes the environment in the cell and all sorts of molecules can find their way on the DNA and they can affect that the DNA works. Think about it this way. DNA is the recipe for who you are. Everyone's DNA is uniquely individual. However, as you know, if you've tried to cook any recipe, sometimes there are changes in your environment that will change the way the recipe comes out. A meringue is always egg whites, and sugar, but if it's a humid day or if you whip up the egg in a different pan, it's going to come out a little bit differently. That's an epigenetic change. And in practical terms that you're beginning to see in real life, how does that show up? For someone that went through a horror like the Holocaust, uh, then how would that show up in that person's DNA? Well, one of the things that we've looked at are little molecules that sit on top of the DNA and change the way that the um, RNA is made from the DNA itself. And what that does is it has the ability to change the way that the proteins are made, and that will change the entire way that people can function. It can change mood, it can change behavior, it can change stress responses, it can change a lot of things. Speaking of those stress responses, of course, one of those stress hor- uh, hormones is cortisol. And as I understand it from the reading that I, that I looked through, it could change the amount of cortisol that would be found in that person. Uh, is that correct? You're, now you're, you're narrowing yes, yes. your eyes at no, me. No, it's correct, but more <laughs> importantly than that, it can change the way that cortisol behaves in the body. And then can that then be passed down to that person's offspring? Spring. Well, we're finding that it, that it may very well pass down because we looked first at adult children of Holocaust survivors and found that they had the same changes in cortisol as in their first generation parents. And we thought this might be a result of their upbringing. But then we looked at cortisol levels in babies that were born to mothers who were exposed to the World tra- Trade Center and who were pregnant on 9-11 while they were running out of the towers. And they had the same kind of low cortisol levels that their mothers had who had PTSD. So we realized it wasn't it's about It's just upbringing. incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. What, what uh, amazing work. This is an emerging field that's just fascinating. Thank you. Dr. Rachel Yehuda, it's nice to meet you. Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks for coming. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. This is Arise America. Yo, this is why, I have a theory. This is why I strongly believe, this is why I strongly believe, um, why there are a lot of black people who don't like the ocean, don't like water, don't like to swim. I swear, there's like, there's a tension. (laughs) There's a tension in your body and you don't know where it comes from. I swear, I think that's the reason why. That's my little theory. 
I swear, I think I think that's one of the reasons why. A good book that kind of goes into this is called The Physiology of Sexist and Racist Oppression. All of this is still really new. Um, epigenetics is um, a very interesting topic. It, it it it's recently been come been coming up lately in the scientific community. Prior to this, I think it was it was really 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 there was a lot of uh, contention around it because they didn't think a lot of scientists didn't think that you you know <clears throat> went through through the fertilization process all of that is supposed to be erased <laughs> right but we're finding that that isn't the case so anyway um that's pretty much it um i just thought i, I just wanted to clarify that i didn't want people going around because i know i mentioned in another video but i didn't really explain it i just said you know genetics you know <laughs> but i didn't want people to think you know oh you know she means um aggression or violence or shit like that or or other types of um, behaviors this more or less what i'm talking about more or less has to do with physiology how your body you know how your body feels and reacts to certain st stimuli right um not um behavior related to oppression you know so black on black violence isn't caused by some sort of genetic component you know why we can't get our shit together is not caused <laughs> by some sort of genetic component you know um but our suscept our suscept our susceptibility to uh, hypertension is caused by a genetic change to the stressor gene. Okay, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it doesn't seem like it, y'all, but I'm I'm an extremely private person. Like, like these kind of conversations and stuff, would like in real life would not be happening if like like, like if I don't really know you, if I don't trust you, or if I'm or if I'm not comfortable around you. You know, I don't really get animated because uh, I'm real low-key. I'm a real low-key person. Um, <laughs> real low-key. Uh, but I don't really get animated like this until I'm, I'm able to really discuss a lot of really, com you know, stuff in depth. Um, but it won't happen unless I, I, I really like you or um, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by you. Or if I trust you, if I'm comfortable enough, there's a lot of factors involved. <laughs> um, so I'm very, I don't know, I, I don't know. And I think with, with online and stuff, I mean, I know y'all out there, but I don't know, maybe this just, this just feels more like a monologue to me. I'm a little more open, uh, but I'm ext I'm extremely private. <laughs> um, let me show you the book real quick. from the title but um all right it's a book it's by um shannon sullivan dr shannon sullivan a lot of her books are very good they're very good this is uh one of my favorite books by her she has another book called um revealing whiteness Anyways, okay. All right, y'all. Hopefully, um, that was clear enough. And yeah, hopefully that was clear enough. Hold on, I'm checking my trade. Hopefully that was uh, clear enough. All right. I don't think I'm gonna have a 30 minute chunk, but I'm gonna stop. So, um, yeah. So. Here, and I want to change it to Ideal Progress. 
Um, I usually don't trade uh, too much in the summer. I play around with it in the summer. I'm not gonna... <laughs> because it's um, real low. Uh, the volume is really low sometimes. There's really not a whole lot of people in the market. Market movers, I should say. They're not really. But, you know, it is, um, it's cool. I probably will stop trading in August and then just pick it back up in like September. August is like the slowest month. Like seriously, I don't even, I don't even mess with it. Right. <clears throat> but one good thing about trading in slower, um, in the slower markets is um, if you're new to it, you know, if you're new to it, it can give you a, um, a bit more. Um, uh, confidence, I think, maybe, or a bit more um, comfort. <laughs> you know, uh, some some I I trade um, foreign key pairs. Some um, I mean currency pairs. I, that came out wrong. I trade um, currency pairs, foreign currency pairs for the most part, and uh, some are a little more volatile than the others. They 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 have a you know sometimes some of them have a tendency to jump up and down very quick, very quick, quick, quick. Oh, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, the USD CAD is like that a lot. It hasn't been like that lately, but the USD CAD does that a lot. Um, right now, I'm on all New Zealand. I'm doing good. So um, I encourage a lot of Black people to get into. I started this like um, 20, 2015, maybe. Not not real trading, but like getting into it. Like I had always had an interest in it you know what I'm saying um you know everyone always you know I know a lot of black people always are into um investments and you know long-term investments um stock and all that which is good um but it, it just takes too long to appreciate for me and I had heard about day trading I had always you know been interested in it but I um, never really really delved into it but and so I got into it like yeah like about 2015 into 2015 and I just kind of um, really delved into it um the material uh trading 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 with real money and stuff i didn't get into it until maybe i'm not sure oh you know uh, it's like learning another language you know what i'm saying um it looks hard but it's really not the technical analysis part. this is technical analysis the technical analysis part is not hard um what's hard and i still have issues with this um, to an extent, is controlling your emotions. <laughs> I know how that sounds. You like what? But that is the hardest part about trading: is controlling your emotions. That is the hardest part. Uh, you have to be able to learn how to walk away from a trade. Uh, you have to be okay with losing a trade. You're not going to win all your trades. Um, you have to be okay with that. And you can't do revenge trading, right? Um, a lot of people think this is gambling. Uh, it's only gambling if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I mean and that's, the, that's the bottom line. If you don't know what you're doing, it's gambling. Because <laughs> you don't, I mean, you're not, you're not paying attention to the charts. You're not paying attention to the market. Anyway, anyway, bye, y'all. <laughs>